Hi, everyone. Hello, we are Av and Court, and welcome to Environmental Podcast. Yeah, this is our podcast where we deep dive into different aspects of sustainability. If you are into sustainability and you want to make it more conversational and accessible, please like and subscribe to this channel so you see us more often. Mm -hmm. Yes. And today we are joined with Sharon Raymond, who is the founder of Simple Shoemaking. And we're so excited that you're here, Sharon. Thank you so much for being here. You're very welcome. <laughs> We've been connected with you for, gosh, years at this point. And so we're yeah. really excited to get to better understand what you're working on and all of the exciting projects that you have. Um, so yeah, can you let us know a little bit about, about what you do? I've always been interested in making shoes in simple ways. Um, there, are, there is a, you know, a standard way that most or almost all um, small shoemaking businesses make shoes using uh, foot forms called lasts, and it's a very much more complicated process. And I always like the kind of primitive or peasant-looking kinds of shoes that were simple and also back in history, <laughs> how shoes have been made in different uh, cultures since forever. Um, so, so just combining different ideas about um, the variety of ways in which, I mean, it's amazing how many ways there are to make shoes, especially when you look at kind of indigenous cultures. Um, so that's just always been the appeal. And for a decade or so, I made shoes to sell at craft fairs and so on and made them somewhat decorative, thinking the unique thing could be, you know, having the flowers or spirals mm -hmm. on them. And, um, about another decade ago, I really got away from that, thinking that, why are people buying these shoes? Um, they're buying them because, I mean, it's a part of our identity of how we dress, and footwear is really a significant part of that. And, uh, you know, I have a habit of checking out people's shoes before I even look at their face when I <laughs> meet them uh you know to get the what the message is from those feet you know, and and so if your feet can say you know i'm cool i'm funky i i do things differently i'm an alternative person you know that's i i see the value in that and but at the same time i just got less interested in making shoes for people that no doubt had lots of they weren't short of shoes to wear they weren't going barefoot if they didn't uh, get yeah shoes so so uh just getting more simple and fundamental and trying and then writing some shoemaking books uh pdf books and that took me a, a long time i mean years to mm -hmm. write these and so but they're they're completed now, and I don't think I'll be writing anything else at my age since um, I'm um, almost 80 years old. So um, as much information as I can pass on, that is what I desperately want to do. So my, my vision really is I'm imagining because I've read so much about greenwashing and sneaker companies um, mm -hmm. that realizing that they will, they will never be able to compete. The big companies will never be able to compete with if someone is making shoes um, using uh, repurposed materials, um, you know, not buying new leather if possible, um, but finding other ways to get leather and using either repurposed materials for soling or a natural rubber, which is available, um, mm -hmm. and making them in healthy shapes 
But and using non-toxic cement, which is really a big thing because I don't know if you're old enough to have smelled shoe repair shops with, uh, you know, this, uh, well, a, sm a smell that's so uh, uncomfortable that's actually, you know, used for sniffing and, uh, mm -hmm. and high. So, uh, yep. so if someone's making shoes with the right materials, the, the uh, healthy cement, the non-toxic cement, and making them locally. So that's the big point I wanted to make is that I'm envisioning, uh, and you know, so many people are working towards getting things more local, like buying local fruits and vegetables. Well, I want to put shoes into that category of things that you can, we would have a, a shoemaker or a sandal maker mm -hmm. in spots all over the country and, you know, I'll say the world, um, so that you're you're not really trying to sell online and get all involved with SEO mm -hmm. and all that. You're just, and maybe it's just a part-time job, but it's while you're watching TV at night, you can stitch. And, uh, and I especially focus on children's shoes because kids really do need shoes since they're growing. And you don't know, you can't always find uh, the right shoes that have, have enough wear left in them and that are uh, mm -hmm. you know, sanitary enough um, to purchase. So, so may, and uh, I think there's a big locally, you know, in, in a lot of places, there's it would be a nice market for handmade local children's shoes. So, mm -hmm. so that's my focus of, of what I dreaming of. I do have a um, twice a month gathering, a Zoom gathering of people who are interested in shoemaking. And and so I'm talking with people that are trying to get the direction going for starting local businesses. So I'm very hopeful that now that I, I'm really ready to do more marketing, I'll let more people know about the possibilities here of starting small businesses, um, making sustainable footwear, then, um, I, and this podcast is so helpful in that regard. <laughs> well, our pleasure. Gosh, I, I mean, it's fascinating what the work that you're doing. I think that I love your vision of having, of like every town having a, a local shoemaker. And it means such an incredible skill. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so, yeah. So thank you for, for kind of putting out like all of the tutorials and all of the patterns that you have that you, that you sell online, mm -hmm. um, just to make that knowledge accessible. I think it's really incredible. And my, my books and my Etsy shop are at three different prices that $25 is the regular price, but I also offered it half price. And then I also offer it for free. So if someone just emails me and tells me they want it for free, I will send them the books. Uh, again, you know, I have this luxury because I'm so, you know, elderly, I, I can get by financially. So I can, and a PDF, you know, it doesn't, uh, take any effort to send somebody a free PDF. So I love to do that as well as, you know, it's nice when I do get some Etsy funds going, but getting the word out, getting people started is really my main mission now, not making a lot of money. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we we also just spoke with a quilt maker who has like a really similar. <laughs> sorry, my dogs are very excited right now. Um, our our a quilt maker that has a really similar vision, and it's interesting to me to see this revival of local makers and people that have these like meetings and they want to bring um, sustainability into like their local making circles. And I, mm. I really appreciate that. It's really cool. When, when you have your Zoom meetings, are you teaching people to make shoes or are you talking with people who are already making shoes uh, and 
Um, like, it can be anybody at any stage or even okay. thinking about it. Uh, and it's a small group. Um, but And so those of us who've been meeting regularly have formed a really nice bond. There's some other people that are knowledgeable about shoemaking from a different angle. And so we just share ideas. And, and then there's sometimes when I plan to just teach something. So it's a, it's a mix. Wow, that's really cool. So you mentioned that um, that you you primarily work with with leather, and then like what what guess what are the soles of the shoes that you work with? You meant rubber, rubber or natural rubber? Um, well, I think there's about three different types. One is natural rubber, which can be purchased because it's it's natural, and but of course it's traveled a great distance to get right. here to the United States. Um, then there's a company called Repurposed Materials Inc. Mm -hmm. com that sells like factory overruns and uh, oh, wow. all kinds of odd things. And um, so I keep my eye out for if they might have anything that looks like Sheet, sheets of rubber um, mm -hmm. and one time they did have a um, bowling shoe company that went out of business and had actual soling so I purchased all of that yeah so I have that which is it's a petroleum based soling but I'm if something exists I'm yeah. making a new market for it then to use it in some way seem, uh, seems um, appropriate for me. So I have that. And then the third thing is uh, inner tube. Uh, other things huh. like fire hose, there are the material yeah. that, and, and uh, the conveyor belt is like one of the products that I worked on developing. And I will say that I've been quite, um, erratic during all this shoemaking years of I'll see so, something this is what I'm going to make I'm, this is this is it from now on I'm not jumping around anymore and then I'll see some other kind of shoe and how do you make that you know and just, <laughs> so so one of the things I jumped to and have left for now but would love to go back to in a way is a forever flip-flop um there's there was a uh there is a climate scientist from the UK who put out this uh, graphic of, in color of um, the temperature of the earth yeah. from yeah. the 1800s up to the present time. And so the- Yeah, the, the lines. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So they get pretty drastically dark purple towards the end. Yeah, they do. But he was putting this, he was selling uh, different products that had the graphic on him. And the flip flops mm -hmm. that he was selling are these cheap type that, you know, once the little uh, plug mm -hmm. pops out, then people just throw them away. And in fact, it's yeah. really terrible, um, especially on the East Coast of Africa, when all the flip flops from India and Indonesia and all just come in this, the, there's a current that just brings them all to the beaches. Yep. So, so I said to him, I emailed him and said, well, he said, if you can make a flip-flop that's not so um, harmful, then I'd be interested in selling yours instead. And mm. I never have quite got to, you know, like a production thing for him, but it did make me start, how can I make flip-flops that are much more ecological? Um, and so somehow I saw on, on this that site, um, conveyor belt and they cut the edges off when they customize the shape of a or the width of a conveyor belt mm -hmm. factory mm -hmm. so they sell edges and also overruns and things like that of conveyor belt so i got uh so i ordered some conveyor belt and it was great i loved it it's so sturdy and the conveyor nice. that i got was even kind of finished with fabric on the top. So you didn't even need to yeah. put anything on it. 
Um, so, and I, so I designed these flip flops that um, have cut slits in the sole that the the um, straps can go through. Mm -hmm. the straps are inner tube; they're bicycle inner tube. Okay. So you've got this bicycle inner tube straps and then the um, conveyor belt edges for soles. And if your um, if straps wear out, then you just go to the bike shop or some and get another bike inner tube. And yeah, or save the bike inner tubes that pop when you replace your own bike and tires, <laughs> you know? The, yeah, the best. So, so I have that product and would love to be... Um, developing that more and i've i'm uh, i've donated most of my shoemaking studio to a makerspace near me and mm -hmm. so the makerspaces with all these different studios of of things of tools and machinery and uh materials to make a in, in a variety of different studios uh, from pottery or whatever uh, woodworking and so on. So there's one near me that I have, I've put most of everything in that maker space. And so I'm hoping to get people started doing these businesses because of course I can't do all these businesses. I, and I really want to get other people starting. So anybody wants to do a forever flip-flop business, get in touch with me, yes. wherever you are, you know, uh, I can help you. Gets that going with that, or at least explain mm -hmm. it. So, you know, you've you've got a good idea of what I'm really talking about. So that's cool. Um, that's how that's about souls. That's that's the and then yeah. the inner tube itself, um, especially for children's footwear, where bicycle and motorcycle inner tubes, and like in third world countries, or whatever, the right way to label these uh, places but I am working with a woman from Kenya and in fact I just met with her for the first time on a couple of days ago because she came to the United States um, oh. um, and um, so motorcycle and bicycle inner tube is available just about everywhere and she says yes there are lots of bikes and motorcycles in Kenya and mm -hmm. Nairobi, the capital, so where she lives. So, so that's is, and also, um, while I'm mentioning this, uh, the reason for making footwear for children in developing countries is the parasites that come through their feet, and yeah, some of these are really ghastly, or I think maybe they're all ghastly, but. I even I have a friend who I was telling about this who lived in Brazil for a while, and she said, "Oh yeah, I remember we would get tweezers and pull these uh, worms out of our <laughs> of our son's my son's feet." I thought, "What? You know, wow. I had no idea that it was so widespread." And and you know, I thought she lived in a reasonably um, comfortable place and. Uh, mm -hmm. And yet, these worms, these parasites, and particularly some in Africa, um, you know, are just very debilitating for the person, for the child. And of course, they mm -hmm. you know, in school, they don't have something on their feet usually. So, so inner tube is the perfect um, soling material, impermeable to anything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And so the big question is, well, you know, what to use for the upper parts of the shoes. Mm. And my hope was that there would be a goat husbandry everywhere. Yeah. Are, are needing these shoes and that that would be the meat that they would most likely be eating and chicken maybe, but uh, chicken skin is not. Uh, very very appetizing yeah. <laughs> i've never heard of shoes being made out of chicken, chicken leather yeah <laughs> chicken leather <laughs> leather of the future um but goat <laughs> but goat is fabulous it yeah. is very yeah. tight it can be thin but yep. it's very strong and sturdy so yeah so 
So she went to some markets um, looking for goat skin and she found some, but I was, it wasn't exactly what I, I was hoping it was really unprocessed um, mm -hmm. that she found was dyed black and it had some sort of a shiny surface on it. Mm. So I was like, oh, well, you know, so, so since she came here, I was able to show her what to look for, but I also am, you know, sending her suitcase back with lots of uh, the leather that I, I, I had the good fortune of a, uh, luxury handbag maker who lives not far from me retiring and selling all his leather so I nice got, you know it's easy for me to now use well this I didn't buy new but of course not that was a once in a lifetime opportunity but I do want to distribute it and let people get started with with that um, leather that it's not purchased new yeah yeah, not thing. Wow. So you, so she's learning the like how to make shoes with you or or, or from you. Yeah. So she's gonna bring that back to Kenya. Right. Um. Well, we went through the process, mm -hmm. and I'll be making a video that'll be available to anybody on YouTube to show how to make this very most simple shoe, and uh, you know, all handmade. It's not going to be a factory shoe yeah but, uh, but she has a group of women that are making other kinds of products for the villages so um that's cool so she has a group that she can plug into so yeah yeah uh, insight and and very grateful to have had this made this connection with her that's so exciting yeah and that 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 just happened so congrats that's so exciting yeah yes yeah, so i'm still uh, walking a few inches above the ground about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, I guess this is just a maker question because I also, I make a lot of things. And um, I, I have two questions. One of them is, do you, like, you work with leather. So do you suggest or, like, have people get all, get an all to, to, to do the sewing or... Um, do you just have them use like a, a needle and put holes in the leather? Um, well, we make holes first. Um, okay. And so it's like when I used to do craft fairs, so many people would come up and say, you must have really strong hands. But I make holes first. So, I, you know, I don't need yeah. such strong yeah. hands. Um, so... You know, I was imagining, well, in a village, there's always somebody has, must be a nail somewhere and, and a mm -hmm. rock, you know, but um, there are other, there are ways to make holes that, I mean, of course, there are um, punches that make yeah. holes. And so that's one way to go. And then you would have uh, some sort of hammer or uh, rubber mallet. And then something yep. under the leather as you're punching, or there are different hand tools, uh, hand rotary punches, punches that you yep. can make holes with. Um, you can also um, make um, holes with uh, small screwdrivers, like a sewing machine screwdrivers. You can, if you can, sharpen them a little bit, and then you know on a, a, a sandpaper, yeah. and then uh, you hit that with the, those with the hammer. So, so little screwdrivers, uh, you know, I'm thinking those might be available wherever they are. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's great. So I always wonder what people that work with, with leather all the time, like what's your preferred method? Um, I like to make slits. I, I think they're, um, you know, they don't take a little, bit out of the leather so they don't leave a, a hole there that make them a little more water resistant yeah and, okay and they they look more they you don't see the slits as much as you see holes but so the slits with the screwdriver or uh, there are all kinds of uh slip making uh mm -hmm. you can get so that's what i like the best but you know whatever is available will i think will will do for making making the holes yeah 
That's cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, there's um, a couple types of leather that, and, and just the fact of talking about making shoes out of leather. I know a lot of people who are, um, you know, wanting to be as ecological as possible. Mm -hmm. think, you know, well, I'm not wearing, I'm a vegan, I'm not wearing any leather. And um, myself, I eat pretty much vegan, although I eat some cans of sardines. They're good for my bones. <laughs> okay. but, um, yeah. but to me, I just envision, well, like I was reading about a um, place where they um, kill the cattle for meat and um, and how um, this that was it was about tracing the from the cow to the shoe, and so this yeah. is talking about from Amarillo, Texas, is where there's a big slaughterhouse mm -hmm. that they then they take all these hides and salt them and put them in a big shipping container until they have thousands in there, and then they ship them to uh Pusan, South Korea. And so this is done because we have high standards in the United States for tanning hides. And so mm -hmm. these people want to have go, you know, just very blatantly, well, we're going to go somewhere where they're they're going to really screw up their environment, but not ours. And there's this, you know, dreadful um video, YouTube video on tanning leather in India is just to see these colors of dyes and things that are just going right out into the Ganges and, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, who thinks this is okay? You know, let's not yeah. do this. Um, but of course, um, I'm not going to have much impact on stopping these kinds of things. But to me, um, do you, do you want this giant, this humongous, giant skyscraper of slippery pink hides in Amarillo, Texas, just to not get used? You know, just to, yeah, because people. I've re I just read that meat eating is higher than ever. That really? red meat hmm. yeah, is really, really big, huh. and it's not. You know, even though you hear there are more people that are uh, vegetarian vegan um statistically meat red meat is being eaten and in, in more than ever as more people have the funds for purchasing it um as well mm -hmm. as the culture uh, in especially in I'm, especially in this country but in this country a lot yeah. of meat is eaten so i mean i'm very practical okay i have to accept the meat is going to be eaten. Um, right. And I, you know, I'm not going to eat it, but that's just one little stomach, you know? Um, so what do we do with all these hives? Right. What do you, what do you, right. The meat's going to be eaten. Right. The so animal is, yeah. yeah. The whole animal should be used and that's, yeah. So, I mean, I know there are some, you know, I have all kinds of issues with how leather is created. And, and, you know, so that's why using, like, buying a jacket from the thrift store and using that, I mean, that's the kind of thing that people can do on a small scale um, or handbags or things like that. Mm -hmm. um, just so you're not buying the new stuff. Because, uh, you know, I, if I thought that, well, the only leather that I would buy new is vegetable tan leather. And um, there are some really nice companies in the United States selling vegetable tan leather. And that's okay. been done. I went once to a tannery in the UK um, that was so old that they had no idea when it was. They had records back <laughs> in the 1300s, but wow. it was already going strong at yeah. that time. <laughs> so, so using, uh, you know, bark and roots of trees or other plant material to tan has been the, what's been done for thousands of years. 
Yeah. And there are some companies doing that in the U.S. Um, and, but um, leather, if you can't find out where your leather was made, then if you still, and I try to be open-minded for people that, well, I really want to use that cement or the toxic cement, or mm. I want to buy new, you know, but they're still making thing, making shoes and making them local. I try not to be, you know, extremely political correct about you've got to do this a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, Every um, step helps. At least they're making their own shoes. Right. Right. It's making, yeah. making yeah. just such a model. Mm -hmm. um, so I support anybody um, that wants to learn ways to just, yeah, just change one thing that's different mm -hmm. is, is a real breakthrough and especially just making them and, and making them, if you make them for local people, then I, you know, I'm really excited about any step that, that gets taken. Yeah. Gosh, Are there any vegetable. alternatives? Sorry. Oh, alternatives to leather. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like vegan leather and mushroom leather and pineapple leather and things cactus like that. Leather, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, well, I, so I, I'm, I'm, uh, giving myself the authority to say that I don't think anything beats real leather. First okay. of all, it exists. The hides exist. Yeah. Everything that's everything that is, well, vegan leather is predominantly a petroleum based. Plastic. Yeah. Yeah. So, mostly plastic. And, and actually almost all the shoes that people wear now are totally plastic. You know, you think mm -hmm. that the sneakers, so I've been told not to really, you know, make people have guilt trips. You know, if you look down at your feet, I don't know what you see down there. But um, so again, it's just the consciousness raising. It doesn't mean people have to be perfect, but more consciousness about like it reminds me of um, there's this wonderful festival near me every year called the Garlic and Arts Festival. And they're very proud of the fact that there's only one bag of trash after the whole festival with, you know, 10, 15,000 people. And um, so, you know, there's all kind of, of uh, the correct kind of, of uh, spoons and forks of the right kind of plastic and paper and everything. And, but I stand there at my booth and look at people's feet and I think, how many trash bags would it take to put all those plastic shoes into? Mm -hmm. And these mm -hmm. are alternative kinds of people, it's alternative raising their kids. And they've got, you know, you know um, one, of course, there's the brand Crocs, which um, I have I have been reading that they're they've got some projectory of becoming, you know, making them out of different materials within hmm. some period of years. But, you know, I, I see them walking, people walking around or their kids in that. And, and you know, the saying about, you know, for seven, gen I'm thinking about seven generations in the future and here's the next generation. And so in other words, education about footwear and, and what, yeah. how it's made and where it's made, like th the types of sneakers nowadays, you know, they're, they're, they're really pretty beautiful, I think, as opposed to, yeah, I really, you know, I see these really great color combinations and designs on them, and they're made out of fabric, they look like, and, you know, what could be, these are perfect, you know, and and so, so practically everybody has sneakers like this, but they're, it's totally petroleum-based. Yeah. Paper, as well as, and like people that buy canvas shoes, sneakers, and think, well, that, this is ecological, but you've got these thick soles that are all made out of, of plastic. So um, it's, it's really extremely hard to um, yeah. shoes that are the best that you can do ecologically. Yeah, really. And, be and before you said anything about it, because we spoke last week and you said, yeah, look at your feet. Like every, everyone is just walking around with, with plastic on their feet. 
I had never thought about it outside of like, um, you know, 8,000 kicks is another brand on our directory and they have hemp shoes with the rubber soles. Um, outside of like learning about brands that are also building, you know, better shoes. I never ever thought about it that way. Yeah. Even, yeah. even us that we've been like educating ourselves about around sustainability, like you're saying, all these people that want to like have this alternative life, mind blown. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And when you ask about other things like um, pineapple or mushroom leather, just manufacturing something takes a huge yeah. amount. If, if you're going to, I mean, maybe there's some, and leather is so durable. I mean, the shoes yeah. I make for myself, they could be, I could be wearing these for 20 years and, you know, there's, and I can easily resole them that will wear out sometimes, but, mm -hmm. um, and, yeah. and sneakers are made, I've read like 60 different pieces are on the upper part or on a, a make of sneaker. Now the, how they're made currently. So they're using tiny little pieces and each of these little pieces can come unstitched and mm -hmm. fall apart. And, mm -hmm. and I think most people expect to buy a new pair of sneakers a year, if not more often than that. So, you know, they're just things that you buy and, and then discard when they start to come yeah. unstitched and don't look so uh, cool anymore. Mm -hmm. Definitely treat it as disposable. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I never really thought about that before. Single use. <laughs> well, I guess it's not single use. Single use, use. yeah, kind but, of. Single yeah. season use, like, yeah. yeah, because they don't, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can take some shoes to the cobbler and, and potentially have them resold, but I think a lot of folks, it's just like too much hassle or they just don't even know, is there a local cobbler in their area? And so it's just so much easier for them. But yeah, but it's, yeah, it's that same level of, it, of folks need to yeah. rethink kind of how, what we're putting on our bodies. Yeah. And I was mm -hmm. reading about um, a sneaker, one of the big sneaker companies um, put that their goal was to sell, it was to be 100% ecological. I think this was Nike, 100% ecological in like 2030 but also to sell twice as many sneakers. And so, hmm. well, so, <laughs> so the article that I was reading says, whoa. Um, and so of course, you know, all about advertising where, you know, wanting you, people to buy things that they mm -hmm. don't really need, but you know, you're, you're gonna be more attractive and, and you're going to be more cool with it if you buying these things and i know that's in everything like all kinds of fashion and yeah. so many um so many things that um so how could so this so this person writing this article said it's impossible to try to become like totally ecological but also have a goal of selling more things to people that yeah. they really need um so, you know, you just can't win with that, with that kind of reasoning and things like, you know, big name brands, uh, mm -hmm. Stella McCartney, who also vegan, but you know, how much, what do you pay for this? And what, why do you, you know, I saw some of them just say like, Stella McCartney and great big mm -hmm. words on it, you know, like, what's the point? What do you, what is it that you're, doing to people what are you doing to this planet you know to mm -hmm. want to get that mushroom leather bag which probably won't last too long and and uh so expensive and that you already have a hundred bags in your closet so mm -hmm. i've hope that's not a problem with my naming different things different companies but no, not at all no no call them out <laughs> especially the nike one that is that I, I remember that happening yeah where they, yeah and we um I, I heard the i think she's the maybe sales manager of, of patagonia talk oh. and she 
uh, kind of spoke about that where companies, yeah, are creating sustainability goals, but still operating under this um, expectation for constant growth and to sell yes. more and more units of products. And, and she was just like, that's fundamentally, those two things can't happen. And we have to rethink how we are, you know, the, the volume at which we sell clothes and shoes and all of these things that, that we're kind of making people feel like they are disposable because there's just so many. It's just such an insane volume yeah. that were, that is being produced. I think that seven, seven billion pairs are made a year and almost all of them go to landfills or in yeah. So, I mean, yeah. imagine working in a factory and you maybe you're the one that puts them in a box and knowing everything I'm putting in this box is going to end up It'll never disappear. It'll never biodegrade. It's going to be here somewhere yeah. forevermore, you know? Um, I just, I really yeah. don't understand it's... people's reasoning. Yeah. Their thoughts about their own children. You know, you're going to be on this planet. How high do you want it piled with plastic shoes? Trash, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the other things I've gotten interested in is how to use up all the scraps that are left over from, you know, even totally. making shoes in Kenya, you know, there's going to be scraps left over. So that's been really fun to find all these different um, little, you know, there's keychains and, and little mm -hmm. body bags and things like that, but just all kind of of uh that are like cool patchwork things yeah that it could be patchwork it could be yeah so like a crossbody bag could, anything mm -hmm. and, oh, and these earrings i have on i call these inchos because they show that i use every single inch of leather Love so it. the <laughs> smallest thing that i can they're so did you make those yeah both parts are leather the the, the oh, circle leather. Mm -hmm. is leather too wow. and so you know that's really fun to to, to have the slogan we use every inch and the, yeah those are fruit. those are so cute thank you yeah it's fun yeah. to have them in there's you know all these colors from leather you can just really have fun yeah smaller things and using up yeah. Sorry. Inch. <laughs> Every inch. Another thing that I'm um, that I'm uh, excited about is the packaging. I know you've had some someone on speaking about yeah packaging, mm -hmm. and so I so when I mail out products, um, I at the makerspace there's a also a brewery and. Mm -hmm. This brewery has nonstop bags that hops come in. And of course, dog food and cattle food and everything. Yeah. They, it actually, they're woven. I, oh. I can't understand why. Yeah, they're like jute or something. No, these are the plastic ones. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the jute might be coffee and things like that. Mm -hmm. that yeah, yeah. Nice. Nice bags. Yeah, that plastic it's woven. Yeah. Plastic oh it's, yeah. It's tiny mm, little, like a tarp. Or something. Yeah, like one eighth yeah. inch strips. But anyhow, so um, so I've been using cutting those up and then hmm. uh, just zigzag stitching on on two ends. Put the product in, and I mean one end is just folded over. Then two zigzags. Yeah. Put it. Put the product in, and then zigzag stitch it closed. And so I just, they're so pretty. They're just really lovely, lovely bags with these hops bags are kind of green and white. And, uh, and I've actually, my 10 uh, year old granddaughter has been making, doing some of the zigzagging. So it's just really a, oh, a fun cool. thing. And hopefully other people that hear this will take a look for um, bags like that to use for packaging. I mean, the fact that Every that you know, you know, the what Amazon does, and I, yeah. and there are many things that I, I do buy from Amazon because th they're specific for you know some little niche of shoemaking that you know I'd never be able to find 
locally. I mean, it's, you know, it's amazing, but such a simple step, you know, to have a place that makes bags out, out of reused materials. Mm -hmm. Why not do this? I know they have some paper ones now, so I'm happy about that. Yeah, I got uh, my parents, uh, because I live in Europe and my parents live in the United States, they sometimes order from Amazon here to make it easy to ship things. And they sent me a gift and said it was a gift. And Amazon sent them in these like pretty horrible, like plastic drawstring bags and it to to your point like it's it would be so simple for them to say oh we can reuse some of the packaging that yeah we have around or they have i'm sure piles of old packages old bags whatever everywhere i don't think people would be offended by that instead yeah, there's if you put a big message on there you know we're this yeah, logical. We're doing our part for the right. Product, you know? Write that on the reused one and stay yeah, those. I I hope. I yeah, hope people are hearing us today, and that that could, <laughs> could make some little difference in like. I can do that, especially yeah. when you have tens of billions of hundreds of billions of dollars to work with. You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're the people that should really be focused on it, really be pioneering uh, the conversations like this. Uh, it's cool that I always think it's really cool that we are doing it. We are pioneering conversations and having and talking to people like you. Uh, but, you know, we're small mm -hmm. and the people that and we, we should be talking to people that have massive platforms and these like you know, all of these billions of dollars that are like going into waste, like they should be having these conversations. But I guarantee you, if, if we reached out to them and said, would you like to join us on environmental podcast? Mm -hmm. They no, no, they don't want to, they don't, they don't want to have an open conversation about how we can transition to a sustainable future, you know, uh, but we'll do it. We'll keep having these conversations. We'll change one mind at a time. It will be, that's what we need to do. That's, I think that's what it takes. And until there's enough like consumer pressure on some of these big businesses, that's what's going to change their mind is like people saying, no, we're not going to buy this anymore. Or like, yeah, I'm not going to buy this until it is to, yeah. to more sustainable standards. And so that's that's my hope with this is that we can get individuals to to really like kind of take back their power and their and an understanding where they're yeah. giving their money <laughs> and um, yeah and that it's possible to make their own and to make yeah. your own yes make, your, make as much as you can make yourself what a pleasure that is if you have you know the time and the and, and yeah. Some, small amount of skill. I want to make shoes while I watch TV. You made that sound like so much fun. I would love to do that. <laughs> that sounds great. Wow. Yeah. You up. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yes. My gosh. So if folks also want to like learn how to make shoes while they watch TV, how can they find you and all of your tutorials and everything online? Well, my website is simpleshoemaking.com. Perfect. And there you have the links to Instagram. And mostly I do Instagram. It gets um, dot, duplicated on Facebook. Mm -hmm. but, um, and then I have quite a few uh, videos, YouTube videos, and we'll be making continuing to make those that seems like the where to do most future education is through these use youtube videos um so and then you know i have blog blog posts on my website so and and i have a lot of old blog posts and i i look at them sometimes and say boy these are interesting <laughs> so you know if someone has the time to look back through through some of those yeah all kinds of random things about the shoe world and what we're yeah 
what's just whatever pops into my mind like yeah they just on post they're but they're fun wow. cool thank you so much well thank you so much I'm, yeah this is great I'm surprised how passionate this became. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's a common that's a common thing we hear. It's like we aren't we don't want to just talk business, right? We're not here to we talk shop. We want to hear about why you're so excited and what what fuels you to to choose sustainability. And I think that's what makes people want to join this revolution, if we want to call it that. It's like, oh yeah. That's cool. We something to be passionate about, something to hold on to. It feels great. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh gosh. Well, thank you everyone for watching. And thank you so much, Sharon, for, for letting us pick your brain um, and for, for giving us your time today. Um, yeah. So we'll see, see you on the next episode. It. See ya. Bye. <laughs>